Hi all, I have an interesting game to show you which is a follow-on from the recent Over the Board game that I showed you recently. Stephen Law kindly emailed me another game he had in the same variation that we played, that King's Gambit in reverse. So Stephen played this game back in 2001 against a Mongolian IM at the time. He got the IM title actually a year before in the year 2000. So a new IM from Mongo Mongolia gambled Odondu, spelt with two O's actually. Um, so um, in this game we have E4 and Steve, short for Stephen, played E5. We have Knight C3. So this is trying to go sometimes into the Vienna game, depending on what Black does. He played Knight C6. So again, F4 is a little bit more controversial here. The IM played G3, and Steve played this hyper-aggressive move F5. It does lead to exciting games. Now here, E takes F5 was played immediately. We have Knight F6, Bishop G2. So, so far it's a little bit like my game, except I only took on F5 when, I, when this Bishop was on C5. But you'll see that after D5, G4, we get a very similar position after bishop c5 by transposition and if if it, we go into my game i think it's like d3 here so i was trying to stabilize with d3 which also of course means bishop g5 could be possible to put pressure on the d5 point now here it's very tempting to play g5 and in fact the i am in this game did actually play g5 and intuitively I was thinking this is a way of getting in trouble surely when, when I was playing the white side for a quick uh, g5 like this. Uh, now here it, it is like a line in the king's gambit where white sacrifices a knight sometimes in the king's gambit but in reverse. So has black got some teeth in this position or not? Well Steve did the knight sack. Not much else to do here because there's things like queen h5 check if the knight moves as well as d5 dropping so bishop takes f5 g takes f6 and it looks really silly now that after queen takes f6 white is even winning the d5 pawn with tempo on the queen nevertheless black to play and it does look as though you know c7 is also an issue here well in this position actually queen h4 was played asking white about f2 so not worrying about c7 check because you know king d7 then we're hitting the knight we're hitting f2 uh, a variation which steve showed me here queen g6 is is also interesting looking at g2 queen f3 this position looks as though White's doing quite well. Okay, so Queen H4 is important to look at F2 here. It's a really ultra sharp position, it's got to be said. We have Knight going back to E3, so not hit, not winning, trying to win material, We're just trying to consolidate the position a piece up. Fair enough. Okay, logical. Now, Black castled. And here, another unfortunate tempo gain on the queen. The queen drops back to h5. Now, this is where the IM could exploit the sensitivity of the f pawn. I mentioned in my over the board game video where if you play f5, this diagonal is often weakened. And it so happens in this particular position, there's a great move to kind of, you know, exploit this, which happens to be one of the better moves in the position. In fact, if I could ask you just because I want to you guys King's crushers out there to know about this diagonal so what would you play here with white uh, which actually avoids dynamic play from black here so if I give you five seconds what would you play with white in this position okay I hope you you think Queen e2 is good because it does look at c4 it seems this would give white an advantage it doesn't really matter what black does here. Uh, for example, bishop g4, we play the check. And we've got a double attack actually on c5 and g4 here after this check. So it's a really important check on the diagonal. 
this diagonal in general as, as soon as the f4 moves look out for the checks uh, also e4 we have the check and we could take here in this position bishop f1 and white's still has not got too many issues and is material up okay so but in the game d3 was played mm, this could be the mistake of the game really but uh, there's a really energetic continuation now uh, from black so steve law can pounce now and what did he play if i give you five seconds starting from now black to play okay he took on e3 yeah the e3 line was quite useful it was guarding things like g4 uh, now we have f takes e3 and the energetic pin bishop g4 which uh, is reducing white's options now having to defend f3 it looks like an awkward pin so white castles is it over is white safe now black to play energetic play to exploit the pin on f3 it has to be said so what would you play with black in this position starting from now i'll give you five seconds here e4 breaks open the d file look at white's development on the queen's side if you remember my over the ball game we see i didn't move the rook on a1 but here it's not just a1 it's c1 this bishop's like hemmed in lack of development on the queen side generally whilst black's got some pressure on f3 here to celebrate so after d takes we have rook ad8 actually hitting the queen and white decides to give back the piece immediately basically he doesn't keep the pin because we've got things like knight e5 if queen e2 we've got knight e5 and that actually holds the c4 square by the way queen e2 there's not so great because we're holding c4 as well so there's no unpinning with a check so in the game actually queen e1 just giving the piece back so black is getting his piece back and if you look at this position it's clearly in black's favor now white played bishop d2 here but um it didn't even want to take this exchange it just looks let's have a look bishop d2 was played so why didn't white want to win this uh exchange because otherwise isn't black the exchange up here so white played bishop d2 being content to be the exchange down if bishop takes f3 queen takes yeah, there's a very strong move in this position can you see what black can do look at white's king it's so unsafe black can play can you guess five seconds yeah standard rook left rook d6 it's terminal and you might think hold on a sec what about instead of bishop d2 well the queen moves we've got bishop d2 has to move because the queen side is not helping king safety rook d1 is waiting so yeah the IM couldn't take the exchange here so is the exchange down after bishop d2 this is starting to look very promising so knight e5 was played now again can't take on f3 because that's a nice fork we have bishop c3 and now a nifty move okay the exchange up but black plays a very strong move in the position here so Steve is putting his Mikhail Tao hat on in this game for the remainder of this game actually black to play if I give you five seconds starting from now okay going for the kill knight g4 so yeah what's happening here can't the bishop takes take well queen takes h2 king here there's a terminal move in this position can you see 
this one and for example if queen e2 queen h1 checkmate otherwise you know how does how does black how does white defend queen e1 queen f2 checkmate so there's no there's no defense there yeah that's unfortunate queen into is like helping the mate isn't it because anyway so that that's just not possible to take the rook so we have h3 being played and now it is possible to play rook takes h3 but also this is strong rook takes e3 hitting the queen it'll be with check so uh the queen moves now another strong move from black taking this pawn has tactical significance remember i talked about this diagonal well in reverse this diagonal so what does black play in this position if i give you five seconds starting from now okay queen c5 yeah tapping into that dangerous diagonal so if takes we've got a discovered check like this winning the queen that would be unpleasant okay so king h1 getting the king a little bit safer for a moment but now the forcing move rook f8 kicking the queen off the queen doesn't want to move though if the queen did move then black has a really crushing blow in this position if i give you five seconds here what would you play with black in this position okay queen h5 yeah rook takes h3 coming next is absolutely crushing so the im now had to give up his queen yep gave up his queen and now h5 e5 has white got some resources still to worry about h4 steve is going for a dangerous form pawn now on h3 one of my favorite attacking ideas to improve the position and you often see in Kasparov games as well, especially in Blitz and Rapid, these form pawns emerging. The H pawn push. Harry the H pawn. Okay, so Harry the H pawn is pushed. We have this check. Now E6, is this getting dangerous? Hold on a sec. E7 next. Is the IM coming back in this game? Well a very nice move here to kick this bishop away from its nice central position where it's controlling squares like f3 can you see what black plays here if i give you five seconds c6 yes kicking that bishop out of the center goes to b3 but now it's weakened this diagonal so black's final move is very logical based on a kind of weakness of the last move the trade-off theory trading off control of f3 just to go into safety but black pounces on that trade-off the downsides it's not controlling f3 so what does black play in this position if i give you five seconds starting from now the final move of the game queen f8 yes coming into f3 and this form pawn will help the mate on g2 for example so this is terminal <clears throat> or if like the rook can't move queen f3 is just unstoppable king h2 for example queen f2 as an example so a very nice game and it shows that actually you know there is some dangers in the king's gambit even in a reverse king's gambit you've got to be careful the im fell down here in this game new im gambled odondu in 2001 so steve is a very dangerous player and i'm glad i didn't give him too much counterplay like this in our recent over the board game okay hope you enjoyed that one comments or questions on youtube thanks very much